Those that are here with us at Teshua and to you that are scattered around the four corners. Whoever is listening tonight, Yahweh Barak Yom, may the strength of Yahshua HaMashiach rest upon you. Hallelujah. The last few times I have come up, Yisrael, we have been talking about the voices of Almighty Yahweh. The sevenfold voices of Almighty Yahweh. But the last time I spoke, we was, we was talking about the pillars. And I'm going to continue on that tonight, however Yahweh leads tonight, Israel. It's important that we understand the purpose of the pillars. Can the enemy destroy the pillars? No, he cannot. He does not have the strength nor the power to destroy the pillars. Hallelujah. As we talked about the building Solomon's house and the building of the Viet of Israel, the scripture, the Torah talks about Yahweh, how he breaks the cedars. Is that not right, Israel? Are we not broken as a nation, Yisrael? There's a reason why. This is the work of Almighty Yahweh. Why? That his Torah, his misvah, may be manifest in us, Yisrael. That it may come to its full capacity. We're not running at full capacity, Yisrael. We're running at very little, very little capacity. And it's time that we pick up the pace. And it's time that we girdle up our loins with Torah, the truth of Almighty Yahweh. That this building, this bayat that Yahweh is putting together shall stand. Yeah. Shall stand the test of time. It shall stand the ways and the wiles of the enemy, the fiery darts of the enemies. Yeah. Shall not be able to bring the building of the Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh down, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh is not going to allow the enemy to do that. No, sir. But it is in his plans, Yisrael, for the strengthening of the building. Hallelujah. He know what he's doing. He is the master builder. Yeah. He has installed the pillars in Yisrael, these pillars of cedar made from Lebanon, the most precious of wood, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's important that we understand the purposes of the pillar. I don't know if, Oxymion, if you can, as I step off the, the podium here. Hallelujah. I want you to observe this, Yisrael. We see this many times when we come into the bayad of Yisrael. Yeah. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pillars here. That's 14 pillars on either side, not including the corners. Now, what if we tonight, if we were to bring the backhoe, the skid loader, we have some rather large pieces of equipment here, and while we're all here, we just start taking out one by one each pillar. Yeah. What do you think will happen? Well, you know what will happen. The roof will fall in. Sure. It will cave in Yisrael. Yeah. And we look at the buy of Yisrael, yeah, as it stands today, it's seemingly as a house that has been brought low. It has been brought down. As it said, the roof has fallen in. It has caved in. Zakein Shimmy, as we build those porches, they're at your home. Hallelujah. It's important that even though the roof exceeds or it extends out, you must have pillars to support that roof. That roof may stand for a time, but as the weather pounds upon it, wind, rain, snow, Without those pillars, it would cave in, Yisrael. You may take out one pillar, the building may stand, but yet the building is weakened. Take out a pillar on this side. It may not fall, but yet the building is still stand. Keep on, and the building will fall. It will be destroyed, Yisrael. That is the importance of the pillars in the building of the Bayat Yisrael. And they're, they're just as important today. And as we studied the last time concerning the building of Solomon or Solomon's house or the building of the Bayat of Yisrael, of Almighty Yahweh, it talked about the outer and the inner courts yeah. having four pillars. Yeah, Very important, Yisrael, the four pillars. Well, what are those four pillars? Hallelujah. Yeah. What do we think those four pillars are, Yisrael? Oh. I tell you, one of them tonight is a hava. It has to be love, Yisrael. I'm going to preach on this concerning the Ahava, the love one to another. This is a preponderance of scripture concerning Ahava, the love of Yahweh one to another. The house of Israel, the Bayat, cannot stand without Ahava. Not this mushy stuff that we call love. We all want to crouch up and smush up and kiss on each other. Hallelujah. That's only a small essence. One thing about a pillar it can be smooth cut, it can be rough cut. One thing about a hava, it can be smooth and rough. Yisrael. Yeah. And sometimes it makes you feel tough. And it sometimes it makes you feel bad. Hallelujah. But it's for the strengthening of the house, Yisrael. Yeah. We must have that pillar. Without that pillar, the house of Yisrael will not stand. 
It will not stand. It's not the hub of Yahweh, sometimes rough Israel. Does he not have to put the stick on our backsides? Hallelujah. Does he not have to put the rod of correction on us, Israel? Does it feel tough at the moment? But yet, it yields forth the fruits of Almighty Yah. So we must have that pillar. Number one, the pillar of understanding, Israel. Wisdom, understanding. And all I get is we must understand what Yahweh is doing in this hour. We must understand the structural aspects of the building of the Bayah Yisra'ya. We must have it, Yisra'ya. You can't walk in the Torah, the Mitzvah of Yahweh, without the understanding. No matter how much wisdom you may have of the Torah, of the book, of, of incidents, of history, you must have the understanding, Yisra'ya. A very important pillar. The third pillar, the judgment. We must have judgment. What happened when Yahweh took out the old ones out of Yisra'ya? He took the judgment out of Yisra'ya. The house fell. It came to naught, Yisra'ya. When the judgment of Yahweh was not executed, we found and we see the falling of the Bayat, Yisra'ya. What else must we have, Yisra'ya? We must have the Ruah, HaKadosh, Yahweh's Ruah, His breath, His life, Yisra'ya. Nothing else is going to hold us together. Not your life. Your aspirations, what you want to do, unless it's by the Torah, by the inspiration, by the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh, it will not stand, Yisrael. Yeah. And upon all these do hinge these other pillars. There's many pillars, more than just the four, but the four are yet very important. Do we have four corners in here tonight? We must have these corners. These are the cornerstones. Without these four, these walls will not stand. Hallelujah. So without these pillars of understanding of the pillars of Yahweh, the house by Israel cannot stand Israel. And I'm going to get into that, into that tonight, even as we have allowed ourselves to be lifted up. Did not Satan say that he's going to lift up his throne, his power above almighty Yahweh? Did not Adam and Eve sin in the garden? That same Ru'ah was placed in Eve, whether you want to realize that or not, Yisra'ya. So us, at this time, we allow ourselves to be lifted above the Torah of Yah. Be lifted above the Mitzvah of Yahweh. Hallelujah. So what's going to happen? Yahweh should break the house. Hallelujah. He has brought the house down. He has brought the house low. He has removed his pillars. Oh, that don't sound right, Zakein Yeramiah. I will show you in Torah. Everything I have spoken, we shall line it up and we shall see have not Yahweh broken or taken away these pillars of Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. But before that, let me read in Tehillim, chapter 29, verse 1. I have read this quite a few times, Yisra'ya. I'm going to read it again. Hallelujah. Tehillim, Psalms, chapter 29, verse 1. Give unto Yahweh. First of all, we must know how to give unto Yahweh. We don't know how to give unto ourselves, Yisra'ya, to one another tough things. How are we going to give unto Yahweh tough things, Yisra'ya? Give unto Yahweh, O you sons of the mighty. Give to Yahweh splendor, honor, and strength. Verse 2. Give unto Yahweh the honor that is due unto his name. Have we given Yahweh the honor today, Israel? Have we given him the honor that is due to his name, O you of the mighty? Worship Yahweh and the beauty, and the beauty of Set apartness or Kodesh. And it says in verse 3, the call or the voice of Yahweh is upon the waters. Did we not talk about the waters, Israel? Did not Yahshua overcome the waters, have power over the waters, Israel? The Almighty of splendor, he thunders. Did we not talk about the thunders? Yahweh is upon many waters. We have nothing to worry about, Israel. No matter how high the waters, Try to overthrow the house of Israel. Did it overthrow Noah and the ark? Did not the ark rise above the waters, Israel? So has the house of Israel rule above all the waters, Israel. We have nothing to worry about, Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 4 The voice of Yahweh, it is powerful. The voice of Yahweh is full of majesty, of beauty, of power, of splendor. The voice of Yahweh, his code, it breaks the cedars. Yes, Yahweh breaks even the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them, the cedars, that which he has broken. We will get to that, maybe not tonight, Yisrael, but we will get to that. He makes them to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like the young wild ox. Hallelujah. Do we see that today, Yisrael? Do we see the power, the beauty of Yahweh throughout the bayat? 
full of life, full of strength, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Do we see that, Yisrael? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Talking about the pillars, how Yahweh breaks the cedars, the pillars. The things that we deem are strong, that are our supports. What does this nation deem as supports? Israel. What are their pillars? Wealth. That's what, that's what their pillars are. The lust of the flesh, greed, food, the bread. Is that not the pillars of this nation? Isn't it not, not, is it not Satan's kingdom of meat and of drink, Israel? Hallelujah. Let's talk about um, the four pillars, Israel, in Torah. Exodus chapter 26, verse 32. Concerning the building of the house of Solomon, the body of Almighty Yahweh. He says, and you shall hang it upon four pillars. It didn't say five pillars, six pillars. At this point, the four pillars of shit and wood overlaid with gold, tried gold. It could not be any kind of gold, Yisrael. It's important that we are covered with the tried gold. As we sung tonight, we have given up these vessels or these garments that are spotted. They're filthy garments and put on the garments of, Yah, of Yahshua, the garments of white. Overlaid with pure gold, their hooks shall be of gold upon four sockets of silver. And you shall hang up the veils for the veil under the tassels, that you may bring in there within the veil, the ark of the testimony. Do we have the ark of the testimony, Israel? Do we bring it into our bayat, into this four pillars, Israel, the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach? And the veil shall divide to you between the Kodesh and the most Kodesh of places. It says also in Exodus chapter 27, you don't have to turn there, you can just write these down, Yisraya. For the gates of the court shall be and hang of 20 cubits of blue, of purple, of scarlet. These are the colors of the fine linen and twine linen throughout with needlework. And the pillars, it says, shall be four. And their sockets. Four. Very important, Israel. And if we will look at what we call a chair with four legs, you have to have the four legs to be able to sit in that chair, in that particular chair. You take off one leg, the chair may stand with a little bit of balance. You may be able to balance a little bit, but it'll be awkward. You take away the other leg, it's almost impossible to balance the, the chair. Let there be one leg left, there's no way. No way the chair is going to be able to, to support Israel. It's important that it have the legs or the pillars. Verse 17, chapter 27, Exodus. All the pillars round about the court shall be filled or fitted with silver, and the hooks shall be of silver, and the sockets thereof of brass, precious metals, Yisrael. Exodus chapter 38, verse 18 through 19. And the hanging of the eight of the gate of the court was neither work of blue, of purple, and of scarlet, fine twine line, linen. And 20 cubits were the length and the height, and the breadth was five cubits answerable. What that is, everything that was done matched everything else. Yeah. There was not anything that was off. Everything was precise. It was perfect. The colors, the way the things was laid, hung on the pillows, the beautiful, every corner. It, it uh, how do I, the word I'm looking for, it, um, it expressed the next corner. Everything blended in perfectly, Yisrael. Yes. If they were answerable to the hangings of the court, everything matched. Everything about Yahshua HaMashiach, everything about Almighty Yahweh, the Bayat Yisrael, it all matches Yisrael. If it doesn't match, if the Torah doesn't line up with Yahshua HaMashiach, the testimony, it is not of Almighty Yahweh. If Yahshua HaMashiach does not testify of that which the Abba has sent him to do, it does not match Yisrael. It will not match in the body of Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 19. And the pillars, again, the pillars, there were four. And there are sockets of brass four, and the hooks of silver, and the overlaying of the chapters, the, the, the chapters and their fillets of silver, Yisrael. Yeah. And also in Melaching, Kings chapter 1, 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 1, it says, But Solomon was building his own house for 13 years. Yes. Do you recall me talking about this scripture on the last time I was up to Israel? What are we building before Almighty Yahweh? 
Are we building a buyer or a place of dwelling for ourselves? Or are we constructing our lives, Yisrael, that the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh may dwell in our buyer, Yisrael? He's not going to dwell in a buyer without these four pillars, Yisrael. So Solomon, he was building his own house for 13 years, and he finished all of his house. Verse 2. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon, and the length thereof was 100 cubits, and the breadth thereof 50 cubits, and the height thereof 30 cubits, and upon four rows of what? Cedar pillars. Pillars. Cedar pillars. Not just any kind of pillar. It had to be the cedar pillar. With the cedar beams upon those pillars, Yisrael. So we must have these four pillars in our lives, Yisrael. The house of Yisrael, we cannot stand as a people without these four pillars. Without the, the Ahava of Yahweh, we must have the understanding, we must have the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. We must have it all, Yisrael, that Yahweh may place his Ruah, hallelujah, in us. If you would turn with me to Isaiah, chapter 2. Verse 1, I want to begin reading. Hallelujah. This is easy to understand, Israel. You can look at any structure, any structure. That's important weight. There's pillars somewhere in that structure. It has to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1, it says, The words that Yahshua, the son of Amos, saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Are we not in the last days, Israel? Yeah. The young Ocarith, the last days. Yeah. That the mountain, the high place of Almighty Yahweh. Did not Yahweh visit Israel yeah. when they served John or when we served John on Israel yeah. upon the mount, yeah. upon the high place, Israel? Yeah. That the mount of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and there it shall be established, Israel. Yeah. Upon the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the hills. And all the nations shall flow into it. Yes. Have we ever observed water flowing? Mm -hmm. It flows in one direction, does it not? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So in this high place in the mountain of Almighty Yahweh, the place of Almighty Yahweh, every nation, every nation, yes. every people, it shall flow into that one place, Israel. It says also in verse 3, and many people shall go and say, come you, let us go up into the mountain of Almighty Yahweh. Are they saying that about this high place, Israel today? Where is this high place? Is it visible? Do we understand in this point of time, Israel? And when we talk about point of time, we're talking about now. This is a now and a living word. Anytime I read Torah, I always can find a correlation now, Yisrael. Though theologians may study, this happened so many hundreds, thousands of years, yeah. yet it is now. We see this now, Yisrael. This now. Even though we look through a glass that is darkly, seemingly, Yisrael, yet the word of Yahweh is alive in our everyday life. Hallelujah. I was thinking today, even the garden, the garden. Satan comes into our gardens, Yisrael, every day. More than once a day, Yisrael. And even at that time in our lives, that trying that we should not eat or partake of that which Yahweh tell us not to, it's an occurring event. It never is, Yisrael. Satan has not stopped from the beginning until now. I would just be honest. I was trying today to partake of that which Yahweh Commanded me not to partake? No. No, we should not partake. We should not transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Are we tried? Yes. But Yahweh has given every armament, Yisrael, for us to overcome the enemy. He's just a mere small, slithery thing. That's all he is. He has no power above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let me read on. And many people shall go and say, Come, you let us go up into the mountain of Yahweh, into the bayat of Yahweh, of Yahweh. And he will teach of his ways. Hallelujah. His ways. Not always, Israel, but his direct. Of his ways. And he will talk and, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah 
And the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Do we see that today, Israel? Is the word going forth from Jerusalem as it should, Israel? Hallelujah. There's not too many places where you could go and find the Mishpah, the Torah of Yahweh, being preached, being proclaimed in the trueness and the power of Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael. And he shall judge among the nations. It says the nations, the Goim. Not only them, but Yisrael. This is all the nations. And shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears. Do we see that in this hour, Yisrael? Is that happening to this, in, in this nation, in this world? Or are we seeing the world or the nation rising up in their own street with their nuclear armaments? Showing off their many soldiers, Yisrael. The nations are yet at war, Yisrael. This is showing us the time that is to come, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So where are we at this time? Let me get to that. Hallelujah. A matter of fact, really, us as the nation Israel, we should put down our armaments, Israel, And we should use those tools to plant, to till the ground. Why? So we may plant the seeds of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that it may yield fruit, Israel. Hallelujah. Are we coming forth to that time of planting, Israel? Hallelujah. So we should already be prepared in this manner. But yet the nations of the world, they are not. It said, the nations shall not lift the sword against the nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Yaakov, come you and let us walk. Let us traverse. Let us continue in the way and the light, the life, the high of almighty Yahweh. Therefore, you have forsaken your people, the house of Yaakov. And this is talking about Yahweh removing himself. Did not he remove his ruach in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned? Did he not have to put him out of the place where he had planted them, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Everything changes here into the rebuke and the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Because they replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines. Have we become soothsayers, Yisrael? Have we looked beyond the Torah, beyond the rock of Almighty Yahweh for the future? Do we not know what Yahweh has in store for the house of Israel? His desire towards his house? It's of pure things, pleasant things. That's what Yahweh has desired for his house. And we continue in his mishva, Yisrael. We have become like the Philistines. We have incorporated everything into this walk of Almighty Yahweh. And they please themselves in the children of strangers. What does that mean? Do we find pleasure in those that are not of the Zerah of the seed of Israel, of Israel, Israel. We should not find pleasures in the strange things. Yahweh, he destroys Israel because of the incorporation of idols and gods. And to the Bayat, his place where his name is written. His Bayat become polluted. Why? Because of what we have allowed, Israel. What kind of idols, what kind of strange things are we hiding? What kind of strange people or strange uh, people are we, um, are, are we, what's what I'm looking for? Yeah, that's all right. That we engage with. Do we try to please Israel? Yeah. Whether it be mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, yeah. uncles. Yeah. If they're not striving or walking in the Torah, Mishvayah of Israel, of the almighty Torah of almighty Yahweh. Yeah. They're strange people, Israel. That's what it, let me read that again. We have become like the Philistines. Why? Because we have or we find pleasure in the children of strangers. Verse 7. And their land is full of silver and gold. Is not this land full of silver and gold? Are there not riches? Do not people have riches in this nation, in this world? The riches are silver and gold. Neither is there any end to their treasures. All of a sudden, there's no end to the wealthy or to the rich. Or to the wicked. It seemed like they continue to grow and to manifest and to obtain wealth, Israel. They said that there's no end to their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Full of horses, vehicles, yeah. ways of travel. A nation is known by their way of travel, whether it's by train, 
whether it's by vehicles, transport, airplanes, whether it's by the air, they're known by their horses. Neither is there any end to their chariots, to the armies, to the weapons, to the armies. So there's no end to the armies. Is not that not, is that not right, Israel? It seemed like you, it seemed like this nation, the Americas, they put so much money to just the building of the armies, of their chariots, of their horsemen. That's what these armies are, Israel. So there's no end to their chariots, and their land is also full of idols. Idols are all around us, Israel. Is this talking about the going of the nations outside of Israel alone? No, this is talking about Israel. These things have come into the bay of Israel. Hallelujah. Idols. They worship the work of their own hands. We, we can attest to that. Let me see the hands in here. Have we not worshiped the works of our own hands, what I've done, what I have accomplished, Israel? And it doesn't mean a hill of beans. Hallelujah. That which their own fingers have made. And the lowly sons of Adam bows down. Those of the low that are poor, they bow down. And the great men, they humble themselves before you. But you do not bear them up. Verse 10. It says here, enter into the rock and hide you in the dust. Why, Yisrael? For the fear of Yahweh and for, and for the magnificence of his majesty. How is Yahweh being made known to us, Yisrael? Yes, yes. By one of his pillars of strength in the bayat, that is judgment. That is judgment, Yisrael. Yahweh has already judged this wicked nation, this wicked people. Yes. Hallelujah. Even the high and the lofty ones in verse 11. The lofty look of the sons of man yes. are not... The looks of man lofty. You pass by one. He think because of his shoes or his dress or his car, what he possess, that he is higher than you. He has more money than you. The lofty looks of the son of man, they shall be humble. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, Yisraeli. It shall be brought down. These things that men think are pillars and strength in their lives, Yahweh is going to break every last one of them. They're not going to be able to stand upon their pillars of wealth, yes. their pillars of warfare, their chariots, their horses, Yisrael. Yahweh's going to break all this mess down. Yes. Hallelujah. And he's going to also break this. He has broken this in the house of Yisrael. Yes. Yahweh has brought us down, Yisrael. And Yahweh alone, by himself, he doesn't need anyone else. Yahweh alone, in his call, his voice, his essence of who he is, shall be exalted in that yom, in that day. Amen. Hallelujah. For the nations shall fall, their strength, their pillars shall be snatched from under them. Yahweh is going to break everything, every stronghold, yes. all the walls, even walls of pillars, Yisrael. And we see, we can see throughout Torah, time after time, even as Yisrael triumphed above the other nations, their walls were broken down. Even Yisrael, their walls being broken down. Why? Because we have not continued in the Torah in the misfire of Almighty Yahweh. Why is that so hard for us to do? Israel. Why is it so hard? It's because of iniquity. It's because of the sin that lies. Deep. You have to search deep, Israel. You all have to allow the Torah to dig deep, to find those things that, that displease Almighty Yahweh. And believe me, you study the Torah, you listen to the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, those things should be revealed, Israel. And we must purge those things out. Hallelujah. Purge us, Yahweh. Allow the fire, Yahweh. The windows of Shemayim are open in his fire. Hallelujah. Let it fall upon the house of Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, Yah. And Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that yom in that day. It says, for the yom of Yahweh of hosts shall be upon everyone. Everyone. Does that disclude the house of Yisrael? Yah? Are we not a people? Are we not one in Yahshua? Are we not one? Remember the old song, we are one in the Ruah. Aren't we one? Everyone that is proud and lofty. We have lifted ourselves above the Torah, the Misfile, Almighty Yahweh. Yisrael. And Yahweh has broken us down. He's going to bring us. He has brought us down, Yisrael. And upon everyone that is lifted up, he shall be brought low. 
And listen what it says here. Who has that in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 13? Yes. What does it say there? Somebody read that for me. Yes. I can't read that for me. What does it say there? Isaiah chapter 2, verse 13. I want you all, verse 13, I want you all to hear this, Israel. And upon all the people. And upon all. That are high and lifted up. Stop right there, Zarkane. Upon all, upon all the cedars of Lebanon that is lifted up, those things we have lifted up before Almighty Yahweh, the things that the nations have set as pillars and has set as strength, Yahweh, conditions of Yahweh. What does it say, Zarkane? And upon all the oaks of Bashan. Upon all the oaks of Bashan. That's one thing about an oak tree. An oak tree doesn't look like a cedar tree. It doesn't look like a pine tree. You, might, you may find them small and thin, but when you look at an aged oak, it is particular in its stature. It stands broad and wide with strength. Yahweh said, upon all the cedars of Lebanon and even the oaks of Bashan. Bash what, uh, what does it say in the next verse, Arcane? Okay? Verse 14. And upon all the high mountains. All the high mountains. And upon all the hills that are lifted up. Did I not talk about the mountains of Yahweh? Did not Yahweh come upon the mountain that he may reveal his Torah unto Israel? What has happened? We have lifted ourselves up. The nations have lifted themselves up unto the mountains, unto the high places. Read on, Zakim. And upon every high tower. Every high tower. And upon every fence. Every fence wall that is still a pillar. A protection. Every fence wall. Read on. Verse 16. The ships of Tarshish, the, the warring ships, the battling ships, the ships of Tarsus. Do not this nation have battling ships, ships on the waters? They should be brought low, Yisrael. That's what this nation depends on. It's a pillar in this nation. The ships of Tarshish, and upon what, Zarkane? Upon all pleasant pictures. All pleasant pictures. The things that we view, what we see that are pleasant, Yisrael. Verse 17. Shall be bowed down. Yahweh's going to break the cedars, Israel. He's going to bring all these high things low. He's going to level it all. Why? That his excellence, that his power shall be exalted. And the haughtiness of, of men shall be made low. And what does it say? And Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. And Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. You may sit down, Zakain. Toda. Hallelujah. Yahweh's going to bring it all down, Israel. There's not one stone that shall be unturned. There's not one pillar or wall that blocks the Torah of the Mitzvah of Yahweh shall stand. Yahweh's going to break it all. He's going to make it all desolate. Did not Solomon Gomorrah, did not he level Solomon Gomorrah, Yisrael, Yah? Was there anything left? The day of Yahweh, the Yom of Yahweh, there should be nothing left but those four pillars. Hallelujah. His pillars, his statues, his Mitzvah, his Torah, his judgment shall stand. The house of Israel, his bayat shall stand, Israel. Hallelujah. In that day, in the yom of Yah. Verse 18. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes, into the rocks to hide from the fear from that which is happening around them, Israel. And into the caves of the earth for the fear of Almighty Yahweh. And for the magnificence of his majesty, of his power, being made known among all people, Yisrael. Yeah. When he arises to shake terribly the earth, did not the voices, the thunderings of Almighty, Almighty Yahweh shake yeah. the thunderings? Did it not break, Yisrael? Yeah. Did it not move yeah. the earth from the foundations? Hallelujah. Yeah. The voice of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. When he appears, he shall shake terribly the earth. How is Yahweh going to do that, Yisrael? Yeah. We've been talking about that. How is he going to shake? By his code, by his voice, by his judgment. As he speak unto the house, Yisrael. Hallelujah. All this shall come to be. Verse 20, Isaiah chapter 2. And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver. His idols of silver? The strength of the power of the nations of going. And his idols of gold, he's going to throw away his idols of gold, the thing that he trusted in, that upheld him in everything, which they made each one 
for himself to what? To worship. You're always going to break it all, Yisrael. It says to the moles. Who know what a mole is? A mole is a little, it's nothing but a, a rat. That's all it is. It digs and burrows in the ground. It lives in the ground, Yisrael. All of the riches and the gold, the silver, shall go to the moles. And they shall throw it in the air to the bats, Yisrael. It shall be of no value, of no strength. That's what a pillar is for, is it not, Yisrael? It's for strength. Is it not value in a pillar? Verse 21, to go into the clefts of the rock, into the tops of the ragged rocks, for the fear of Almighty Yahweh shall consume them, Yisrael, and the hearts of men shall fail them. For the magnificence of his majesty, of his power, when he arises to shake terribly the earth, verse 22, he says, cease you from Adam, from man, for the walks of man, from the ways of man, for the walks of the flesh, Yisrael, whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Come on, Israel. Yeah. What is this flesh worth? What are all these things that we think to sustain this life? What is it worth without the Torah, the Mitzvah of Yah? It's not worth anything. It's not worth anything. Let us move on. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Yahweh is going to take away these pillars of strength from the nations, Israel. Isaiah chapter 3. Verse 1, for behold, the sovereign, all sovereign, all powerful Yahweh of hosts does take away. Does it say he should take away Israel? Does it say that there? The, the third chapter, verse 1 of Isaiah, for behold, Yahweh, sovereign of hosts, he does at this time, he does not then, but right now, take away from Jerusalem. And from Yehuda, the stay. What is the stay? What is the mishal, the stay of Yisrael? What is that support, that pillar that upholds the bayit? You mean to tell me that Yahweh, at this time, did it not say that? He does take away from Jerusalem and Yehuda the stay or the support of oh, the pillar of Israel, what are we without the pillars of Almighty Yah? We're just like the heathen. We're just like everyone else that depends on riches, that depends on wealth, that depends on some substance to sustain this physical life, Israel. There's no hope in the, the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no hope in the work of Messiah, Yahshua. He shall take from Yehuda. From Jerusalem, the state, the mishom, the support, and the staff. What is the staff? Should not the staff be our strength, Israel? Should it not support us in all that we do? Not only is that a staff, because it used in the Hebrew two different words. The state is the mishom, and the staff is the mishainal, or the mishet. What is that? Well, if we look at the pillars here that we have here in the tabernacle, what do we see? We see the blocks, do we not? What holds the blocks? The mortar. That's also a type of the staff or the mesh ayon. No, Yisrael. It holds the blocks together. We need the stay and the staff to hold Yisrael together. It takes these pillars of Almighty Yahweh that the body of Israel may stand. You mean to tell me that Yahweh is going to take this away? Why? Why is he going to take this away? Why? Have you ever seen when there's a demolition work or reconstructing of an old home or house, they have the old pillars that need to be replaced? So what do the carpenters do? They, they take a two by four and they wedge it here. Or a metal rod, and they wedge it there. Why? To support the roof while they repair the pillars. But what we have done as a people, Yisrael, we have tried to stick, stick uh, what we want to do to support this roof or this building of the Bayad or this house of Almighty Yahweh. So we, we put lust here. We put desire here. We put lies there to try to support the roof. But it's going to fall in without that pillar of Almighty Yahweh. We try to use those to hold up this roof because Yahweh, he has taken away 
these pillars, Yisrael, from the Baya Yisrael. And we think to sustain this outward tabernacle that we could just put anything in the Mitzvah and the Torah that shall support us and what we do. That's not how it works. Because if we take away, if we add them to the Torah of Yahweh, what should happen? All the curses that are written shall be upon us, Israel. Israel. So you, when you ride by, you see a home that's been worked on. That looks a mess, does it not? Having two by fours here and having a rod to hold this up and hold that up or to keep this from falling in. Instead of just doing the job right, Israel, we try to put other things to sustain this life. And it's not going to work. It's only going to work for a moment, but shall all fade away, Yisrael. Only the Torah, the Mitzvah, these pillars of Almighty Yahweh shall stand. Hallelujah. It shall stand, Yisrael. Let me read that again. For behold, the sovereign Yahweh, merciful, almighty Yahweh of hosts, does take away from Jerusalem and from Yehuda the stay and the staff, even the mortar that which holds the bayat together, the whole stay of bread, bread, is it, not, is it not a pillar? Do we not need that for strength to sustain even this physical life? Do we not need the, the bread from the Shemayims to fall that we may sustain this life, Israel and the Ruah? It says the whole stay, ko, all, the completeness of it, the essence of it, of the bread, and the whole stay of even the water. Don't we need water? Yes, Raya. I may mention even concerning the waters, how Yah moves upon his rock, moves upon the waters. That even our bodies, no matter how big or small that you are, Yisrael, it's mostly 60 to 70 percent, sometimes 80 percent water. And I remember this statement because I remember my Avat would say, would make this statement, even concerning his weight, that it was water weight. But don't you know it is proven by studies that even though you are overweight, that even an overweight person can have volume by volume, a percentage less water than one of a normal size, Yisrael. It is, it's a fact. It's a fact, Yisrael. So what, what has happened? We have allowed the lust of our flesh to put on this excess weight, Yisrael, and it's pushing out the waters of life out of our vessels, Yisrael. That's why it's so important for us to be as a people, even in the physical sense, healthy, Yisrael. We must have water in these bodies. And we must eat the right breads. We must eat the things that sustain this life. You see people, they go to the fast food restaurants. All it is is just fillers just right now. There's no life in the bread of the wicked. They eat, they become grossly overweight, and they still aren't full. They still aren't sustained. The things that they depend on, Yisrael, it doesn't fulfill. Only the Torah, the Mitzvah of Yahweh, fulfills. Hallelujah. Take away the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Now, let us move to this. Now, there's 11 of these pillars, and I call them pillars because they're strengths in the body of Yisrael. And without these, as I said from the beginning, it will not stay in Yisrael. Hallelujah. What, are the, what is the bread? What is the stay? What is the water? What is that thing that sustains Yisrael? Let us move on in verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 3. The mighty man. Yahweh is going to remove the mighty man. Of valor. We're the mighty men today, Israel. There are very few mighty men. You cannot step out into this old limit to this world and see men of valor, men of strength, those that stand on the Torah. You don't see them. They're not there, Israel. There are very few, if I may say, of us, Israel, that stand on the Torah, the Mitzvah, out of all the men of the going of the nation. But Yahweh, He said, He should take this pillar. He has taken this pillar, the mighty man. The mighty man, number one. What else has he taken, Yisrael? And the man of war. Where are our warring ark? Where are the Adam of war? Where are the men of valor? Those that fight, that stand in defense, that go to war, Yisrael. Do we see them, Yisrael? They're very few. Why? Because Yahweh has taken away. The man of war and also... The judge. Don't we need a judge, Israel? We need judgment. We need those that are not afraid to execute judgment upon Israel, upon the house. Hallelujah. Judgment. And what? The Nabi, the prophet. You mean Yahweh takes away these things, Israel? He takes away this bread, this life, this stay, the staff, these elements that hold the Bayat Israel together? 
Did I not read Did Yahweh take it away? Or did the enemy take it away? Did we take, who took it away? Yahweh. And also, the prudent. There's not many prudent amongst us. What is that? It's a man that is sober. He's serious about what he does, what he attempts. And every aspect is prudency. There's a measure of what he do. He knows his limitations. He knows how far to go. He knows where to start and when to end. He's prudent. He's prudent. Yahweh took away the prudent and the ancient, the Zakain, the elders, those that are of age, that are older, has a, a experience, Yisrael. We're not finished. Chap verse 3. The captain of 50, the captain, the one that is able to take the 50, and then just from those few men, he can conquer any amount of armament that comes against the bayad of Yisrael. Only 50. It doesn't take many of us, Yisrael. Few men. It doesn't take thousands of men, just, just a few men. What happened to that captain of the 50? The one that's able to lead Israel. Yeah. The honorable man. What about the honorable man? Is this not a stay? Is this not a mortar? Do we not need an honorable man in this hour yeah. to hold this bayat of Israel? Don't you understand why Yahweh has taken all these other pillars down? And he's going to build the bayat himself, Israel. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's going to put in place each pillar. Each thing that is lacking in the house of Yisrael, that we may stand, that we may be a house that is beautiful, that we will be a kingdom, that we will be a house that is set upon the hill of Almighty Yahweh, whose light cannot be hid. And I have a teaching concerning even that, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Going up upon the mountain of Almighty Yahweh. It says, the honorable man, the counselor. Do we have counselors in this hour, Yisrael? What are the counselors? Who can we go to for counsel when we don't understand the Torah or a situation? Who can we truly go to? Yeah. The counselor. Where are the counselors in the house of Yisrael? And the cunning artificer, those that are cunning with the Torah, with the mystery of Yahweh, know the ins and outs. Know what it takes to go from point A to point B to stay on this path of Almighty Yahweh. And the eloquent orator, eloquent in speech, don't make mistakes. He's being led by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Most importantly, he's in down with the Ruah HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh, dwells in his bosom. And he's able to bring out the Torah of the Mitzvah in a beautiful way, to show the hidden things in the Torah of the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Continuing in verse 4. He said that I will give the children to be their princes. Children to be their princes. Do we find children ruling in the house? You find today the husband head, which should be in the house, doesn't rule. The wife under the head doesn't rule, but the children. Yes. The children rule. And the babes shall rule over them, it says in verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another. Yes. And everyone by his neighbor. Are we oppressing one another, Israel? Yes, is that happen? Do we see that amongst the house of Israel? Let us be honest, Israel. Hallelujah. We must be honest with ourselves so that we may find that missing link that we need, Israel. The pillar that we need in our lives, Israel. Proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. Verse 6. When a man shall take hold of his brother's house, of his father, saying, You have clothing. Be you your own ruler, and let this ruin be under your hand. Verse 7. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer. I will not be the one to bind up. For in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. Isn't that a shame, Israel? That there's, there's, there lacks a desire even for those to be rulers. To desire to be one that sets the house in order. It's, 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 a, it's a hard task in this last hour, Yisrael. We must be on the mark, men. Hallelujah. That we stay point on point. First of all, checking ourselves. Hallelujah. And then being an observer or a watchman over the bayat of Yisrael. Hallelujah. 
As I bring this to a close, and I'm not finished, Israel, y'all, we will get back to this concerning Yahweh. How, how, don't you understand how he has broken the pillars? Has he taken the pillars? Even the pillars of, of um, Lebanon, Israel, y'all, the things that we deem are strong, that man deem are strong, he's taken them away. Why? Because there's only one foundation, which is the foundation of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we must build upon. And then we must, this house must be dedicated upon these pillars of Almighty Yahweh. Nothing else will stand. Nothing else will endure. Only the Mishvah, the Torah, the promises, the coal. Yahweh's essence, his being, and his speech, Yahweh. His conditions of Yahweh. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring this to an end tonight. Um, turn me to Yachahana. John chapter 9, verse 1 through verse 5. And I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Isn't Yahweh tough, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Even though Yahweh, he takes away. Hallelujah. Did not Job confess that? That Yahweh has given him all things, his wealth, his children. He said that Yahweh has given and Yahweh has taken away. Yahweh has taken away these things. But yet, still, we should barak Yahweh. And all things. Why? Because Yahweh shall restore his house. He gonna, these pillars are going to be put in place in this building of the Bayat Yisrael. Hallelujah. Yachahana chapter 9 verse 1. And as Yahshua passed by, he saw a man. This is the house, Yisrael. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Were we not blind from our birth? Blind of the knowledge, the understanding of the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Who did sin, Yisrael? This man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yahshua answered, Neither has this man sinned. What has called this upon the Bayat Yisrael? Hallelujah. What has caused Yahweh to take away these pillars, to break these cedars, these strong things that hold up the, the roof of the Bayat of Almighty Yahweh? And Yahshua answered, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of Yahweh shall be made manifest. Don't you want the works of Yahweh to be made manifest in your Yisrael? Don't you want the works of Yahweh to be made manifest in the Baya Yisrael? So it's going to take a reconstructing. Yahweh is going to come in with his battle axe. He's going to knock down the pillars that we think are sustaining us, that all they're doing is just bringing death into the Baya. He's going to rebuild. He's going to build his house, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. I want that, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Tear down, Yahweh. Rebuild everything in me that's not of you. He says in verse 4, that I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day. It is important for the light, Yisrael, of day, that the plants will receive their strength, their growth. Even the trees must be matured. See, when they went into Lebanon to harvest the cedar, they didn't get immature trees. They were mature trees able to stand the load. They had to be magnificent in structure that it may be fitted for the buyer. But they had to have the right light. The water had to be right. The settings had to be right to produce what? The most excellent of trees, excellent of woods, Yisrael. Why this still day? Because the night comes. Are we in a night season, Yisrael, when no man can work? We have to do this while we're in the high or have the life of Yahshua HaMashiach in us, in us, Yisrael, for this building. Because the night time comes. It's amongst us, Yisrael, where no man can work. In my last verse, verse 5, he says, as long as I am in the world, as long as I am in the Olam, he said, I am this light of the nation, of the world, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That is also a pillar. The light is also the understanding. It's the life of Almighty Yahweh. We must have these pillars in our lives, Israel. So let us tear down these pillars. Allow the Torah of Yahweh, this battle axe, to come in and just reconstruct our lives. Allow the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach to wash, to cleanse this by it. Why? That his Ruah will be invited, Israel. Hallelujah. We need Yahweh to pour out his Ruah upon this partially. Hallelujah. Why? That the seed may be manifest. Aren't we planning, Israel? Planting in the gardens, getting ready. Hallelujah. Yeah. Want to be a sad shame to do all this work and planting and there's no harvest. Hallelujah. But yet in the last days, in the Yom Akarith, the Yom of Yahweh, he shall, there shall be a great harvest. 
Hallelujah. And all of us shall be ready, Israel, mature, full, and beautiful in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you want to be a beautiful bride, bride in the eyes of Yah? Or Yahshua HaMashiach? Hallelujah. That's my desire. Hallelujah. Told you, Yah. I do pray this has been a, somewhat of an inspiration to your left tonight, Israel, that we tear down everything that is not of Almighty Yahweh and allow Yahweh to build his pillars in our lives. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. Let us turn unto Jerusalem. Hallelujah. To the high place of Almighty Yah. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you for this night, for this Wednesday night, Scripture Truth, Torah Truth, Yahweh. We do pray, Yahweh, that you would take all those that have traveled from near and from far, those that are listening from near and from far, Yahweh, or by live stream, or by via internet, Abba Yahweh, that you would allow your melican to be a camp around us, Yahweh, your Torah, your mitzvah around us as a hedge. And protect us this night. Keep us, Yahweh. And give your beloved beautiful rest tonight. For in all things we do barak you, Yahweh. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh barak you, Abayat Yisrael.